Oh, whoa, whoa, one minute, Simon. Hold on. I think you've got a problem here. You've got a uh, dewy beard. Oh, no, not dewy beard. has got dewy beard again. That's just... It's a bad thing that can happen on the trail. Oh, yeah. You start, you start dripping in, that's it. So welcome to day 15 on the GR10. We stayed at Gorette last night. Everywhere was closed. But we stayed in the uh, refuge there. And uh, although a little pricey, it was 41 euros for a demi pension, which is your evening meal, a bed in a dorm and a breakfast. Nice food last night. They did uh, home cooked soup and sausage with in tomato with rice. And we're going from Gorette to Arens Massus. And uh, it's 900 up. 1400 meters down so even though it's a five hour ten day there's still a lot my right knee is still twitching from the big descent we had yesterday Again, lovely fragrance this morning as we're walking down this valley. I don't know what it is, but something smells very sweet. That looks like our next descent down there. A little down, then a little up. Today's new flower. I don't think I've seen one of these before. This is a nice little hazel woodland getting down towards the bottom of the valley. Simon has indeed found the snow cave from the avalanche. I think this is in the, uh, the guidebook. At the refuge, we did laundry last night, but unfortunately there was no warming devices or anything like that. And because it was uh, humid, we um, didn't get a chance to dry everything out. So as soon as the sun comes out today, straight on the back goes uh, any damp laundry. Yeah, it's been mostly cruisy today. There was a first steep bit, but it was a nice cruisy descent and ascent out of this valley. Yeah, pleasant day so far. That sweet fragrance I mentioned earlier, I think it's coming from the elderflower we have here. We've just seen the route that the road takes up there. And there's a car coming down. Good morning, my dear. You looking good today? Go to the left. Don't go to the left. Sorry, right, you stay there, don't worry. We're up at that beautiful level of wildflower again now. Oh, it's like walking in heaven. Look at that all the way up this valley. Can you hear the cuckoo? No, he stopped now. Bastard. So we're about halfway through stage 15. We've reached the second col here. And now it looks like we've got quite, quite a cruisy descent down into Arens Masus. We've been joined for lunch here. Wow. The Riders of Rohan. You're yeah, alright. Come on down. It's okay. I wish I had my trainers on now, Si. So I could jump out the way. It's not every day you're joined at lunch by a uh, few big, beautiful beasts like this. Smile. They're good looking too, aren't they? Move along now. Move along. They are some formidable beasts, these. Well, it's a bit close. Move along now. Move along. No, move along. No. Well, I had to protect my lunch because they were after that for sure. <laughs> that got a little bit scary. So we have in sight the end of stage 15, Arens Masus. Uh, it's now 
half past 12. I'm gonna get down there, have a coffee, see if we can find uh, a bit of pastry or something like that, patisserie, and then discuss tactics of what to do next. Could this be a new one? That's an old Peyton by the look of it. So we just met the, mo the most uh, interesting and amazing lady. Uh, just walking down the trail here. Um, she spent six months in Nairobi with, what was it, a, sh a shame? Uh, a Maasai. A Maasai. Yeah, a friend of hers. And she, she found the perfect bike for her. And then she also found a good bike for the Maasai as well. And they went cycling together. I think she just heard us speaking English. And she said, are you English? And we went, yeah. She's Scottish. Yeah. Are you going to stay on the GR10 or just... No, no, up until this call up here. Oh, yeah. And then I'm going up towards Lord's. Okay. Travelling uh, on a bicycle in, uh, in and around uh, Kilimanjaro. And uh, she decided to come north. Uh, managed to get a mix up, we have a mix up with the airlines, lost her bike and uh, ended up in um, Madrid for a week trying to get it back and then uh, decided to up sticks and walk up through Spain and across the Pyrenees uh, and she, we asked her where she was going and she says I'm off to Brittany. Walking across France to Brittany. Uh, she, as I said, I think she, she was of indeterminate age, but she could have easily been mid-70. Um, wonderful, wonderful character. Wonderful stories. You could, you could write a film about her. Absolutely, yeah. She, her, she was dressed rather eccentrically and, uh, you know, didn't have a proper backpack or anything. Just had something she's, floating on her been, shoulder. She said, oh, I, I camp in the woods and then um, I look for maybe disused buildings. There's lots of little huts around here yeah. and I just slip in there and I sleep in there. Yeah. Hats off to her. Hats, Hats off. off. She, she's living life to the most, I'll yeah. tell you that. This is the Chapel de la Puy Lune. So we're going to walk into our end's masseuse and uh, hopefully find ourselves um, coffee and patisseries. So we went into Aran's masseuse and sod's law, everything was fermé, uh, just as we got there and everybody else was leaving. So uh, everybody else is heading up to Lac d'Estang, which is about three and a half hours from here, I think. Something like that. So we thought, let's do that too. So, um, you're walking the whole, yeah. Le Tout GR10, you're walking the whole GR10. Yeah. And uh, you're going to do it in 40 days, which is very quick. Day 10, are you feeling strong? Is it going well? Mm -hmm. yeah. And your names? Nicola. Nicola. Antoine. Antoine. Cecile. Cecile. Lovely. And the, these guys are doing a great job. <laughs> nice to meet yeah. them. Yeah, nice to meet you too. I wish we were as fast. Now this is right up Simon and I's street, an arboretum. Our ends masseuse on the GR10. An unexpected pleasure for us. <laughs> It'll pop back into my head every now and again. One of Peugeot's finest. <laughs> I think we'll go, we might go to the lake, we might go to the lake, we can. Well, we can camp there tonight. Yeah, it's only it's a couple of hours, but... Le tap de randonneur. This is a lovely looking spot, isn't it? I'd come here nice. in the motorhome. Look at that, Max. Oh, for sure. Very nice little campsite there. We stopped in and uh, got some, a few basic provisions. And now we're going to carry on to uh, Lac de Stang. Hopefully it's not going to be too long because it is 20 to five in the afternoon. Uh, but we're feeling good. It's a nice afternoon stroll, actually. Oh. Nearly at uh, Lac de Stang. Had a lot of road walking today, but we've got quite far, haven't we? Yeah, we've right. cracked into stage 16? 16. 16, up to Lac de Stang. It's now about half past five. Good morning on day 16. Uh, we stayed here last night at the camping ground de Lac de Stang and um, yeah. Had a, re a decent night's rest. We managed just to get in for dinner and get dinner from here. Very nice selection of food, but they stopped serving at six. So we got dinner and a beer, and now we have a big 1,000 meter climb this morning. 
had a nice evening last night with the rest of the GR tenors. So we'll uh, carry on on our last big push because today may be our last day, depending on how we get on, or we might have one more camp up at the next uh, refuge. All right, one last push, about a thousand meters up. Yeah, Simon has just spotted some tracks down here. Now he's not sure what would make these apart from perhaps a wild boar. Happy birthday, Simon. Ah, ah, thanks. Ah, what a way to celebrate. Yeah, thousand meter climb. Thousand meter climb. As a wise man once said, let the dog see the bone. Could it be there? I'm not gonna lie to you. These last uh, couple of 300 meters have been hard. This looks like the coal. We're nearly there now. Well done, Sai. Good way to celebrate your birthday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's much nicer. Cruisy trail, nice and mild. Sun shines out. It's all pretty cool. Cool. You, look at that. You can just see it and hear it. The wind running up the hill there. Simon and I have just been saying, well, we're going to Quarterettes now. We'll have two and a half days there. Depending on provisions of what we can get at this refuge up here, we're thinking what we might actually do is stage 17 a which cuts across the back of this mountain here, and then come back on ourselves, literally back on the GR10 in the Quarterettes. Blowing a gale like this, I don't think he's. Uh... We don't want to be silly, do we? No, not this late stage. We had a good run, I don't want to spoil it. No. Mm -hmm. Right decision not to do this, I think. Can you hear this? No, no. too windy. Too windy. <sighs> well, so that's it then. Final descent down into Cotterets for the end of our section hike of the GR10. So we did uh, 16 stages in 16 days. We've done about 299 kilometers and with a total ascent of 16,900. Just now savoring these last few kilometers of trail we've got here before we get back into civilization. But it's been, it's been incredible. Really, really incredible journey on the GR10. Yeah, I suppose I'm speechless. Don't know what to say about it. it hasn't finished with us just yet. I'm not as cruisy into town as I first thought. This is typical GR10. We've got a lovely, nice, even cruisy trail. It says, no, 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 no. You're gonna go up around the side on the right here where it's rocky and tricky and uh, fally. Uh, maybe then I'll let you go back on the trail later down there. Butterflies like it here. So this is your common um, stinging nettle and you can see it's been munched to bits. There's a few still hanging on. And that's why you should always have a patch of stinging nettles unchecked in your garden. Great for your butterflies and moths. Beep. 